Last week on the Lost Gardens of Chateau de Rosières, we dug an enormous hole behind the disused water system that we're transforming into the Chateau Estate's technical room and greenhouse. We put in place proper drainage to prevent leaks and installed a huge water storage tank to store spring water for use in the greenhouse. This week, the first thing we need to do is build a retaining wall to hold the water tank in place. Michelle has been working on the Chateau de Rosière estate on and off since the 1960s and comes from a family who have lived in the local village for centuries. His understanding of local gardening and building techniques is invaluable and he is passionate about this land. He has been gradually restoring stone walls around the 130-acre estate that were destroyed during decades of invasive commercial forestry. Today he will be building a stone wall that will not only be capable of holding back a huge tank of water when it's full, but will also look in keeping with the stone facade of the original cistern building. Mark and Michelle have been using the larger stones that Mark excavated from the hole last week to create the wall, choosing the nicest ones for the front face. With the digger, Mark is then taking the uglier stones and placing them behind the finished wall to reinforce it without disrupting the aesthetic. Once the plumbing for the new water tank is complete, rubble will be used to refill the hole around it and the top will be landscaped to extend the roof of the current system and bring it right to the old entrance of the chateau. But first, Mark has some pipes to install. Today I need to plumb the water tank that we installed behind this wall in the garden shed and I, therefore I need to drill two holes through the concrete wall up here. I'm going to drill a hole about this height so that it comes at the, the same level as the spring pipe and so all the electric things will be diverted into a switch box but at least the, um, all the water will be coming below the electricity, which is a bit safer. I'm gonna move a couple of plants out. All right. I got my uh, ear protectors because it's a bit, uh, a bit noisy and the uh, sound bounces uh, on the walls. <laughs> okay. So now I need to widen the hole. So I'm going to use my bigger drill bit, my very satisfying drill bit. Run out of battery now. <laughs> Whew. That's hard work. <laughs> um, I need to recharge uh, this battery and uh, I'll be back. It's springtime, so we have a lot of projects uh, uh, running at the same time. So I had uh, to leave this one on the side. And now I have battery. I'm going to be able to carry on with and drill the other hole to pipe the, the system. Mm. It's not the most comfortable. So those of you who watched the, the start of this uh, garden shed project, you remember that we had to use a rock breaker on a digger to, 
to open the doors and the window. So that's what I'm drilling through at the moment, this uh, really thick concrete. Okay, my, both my holes go through. So there's one for uh, filling up the, the cistern that will be linked to a float valve so it doesn't overfill. And the other will be connected to a pump that will uh, suck the water out and redistribute it wherever I want in the garden. I will have a quite complicated system to uh, manage the water. So there will be the mains water coming from, uh, from our springs arriving through this pipe that will come into the, the edge of this uh, distributor. I will be able to, um, to fill up the tank at the back uh, using a valve like this one that will fill up the, the tank. The, it will not overflow because I'm going to put a float valve inside the cistern. And on another one, I will have a pump the, between the, the tank and uh, this, uh, this entrance to be able to send water from the cistern to elsewhere in the garden. So I will just need to turn two valves uh, off and uh, I'll be able to manage the, where the, my water is coming from. And then I have some extra outlets here. Uh, to direct the water to different parts of the garden. So there will be one uh, big pipe going to the sunken garden, which is a, a big uh, garden we have a be beautiful project for. We'll have uh, one for the micro drip irrigation of the orchard, one for the micro drip irrigation of the geranium pots on the front terraces of the, the chateau. And uh, actually, I'll be able to add another extension here to get some more outlets for uh, the greenhouse, the hydroponic system, if I ever want to put one, and uh, there, everything I can imagine. Before I do all this and connect my pipes, I need to make a plan of what I want to achieve and get all the fittings, which is quite an important shopping because the I don't want to forget anything. Another thing I need to sort in this garden shed is the drainage. So before we poured the concrete slab, I had installed the PVC pipe to be able to put a sink and I've kept a hole on the floor to be able to put a drain so I can wash the floor easily. A while ago, I found a beautiful cast iron plate uh, that's designed to go on, uh, in, on the floor in a courtyard. It's uh, really pretty and old, and I thought I could use it to fit over here because it's right in the entrance of the garden shed, so it's something we will see straight away as we come in. So this plate is going to go over the, this hole. Uh, so I had left the PVC pipe sticking out so it wouldn't get filled with, the, with rubble when we did the, the rest of the work. Uh, but it, this pipe is actually not, uh, not glued. So what I'm going to do is install siphon in the little hole uh, here, so it will be a tiny one. I'll make a cement funnel around this PVC pipe and fit this over the, over, on top, over everything. So I'm going to put some, uh, some paper to block the drain so I can work on it without, uh, without filling it with cement. Like this. <laughs> so this is going to fit like this. Uh, so the hole, 
the whole around is roughly the right size. Might need to adjust a few, a few stones. And then it's sticking out, but uh, I'll actually put some stone tiles next to it. So I need to, to check the, the levels before I lay it uh, permanently. Clément is going to help me mix some cement. The idea is that the, um, this will be flush with the tiles. Um, so the tiles will come like this. So I will adjust the, um, the final height when, when I lay the, the tiles. But the idea is that uh, everything's exactly uh, completely flush. Up. So this uh, will go like this. Um, I think it's looking good now. I'm going to put some rust protector onto the cast iron. And uh, then I'll just need to put the, um, a siphon underneath so that the, 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 the drain doesn't uh, get blocked. I think I'm done for the day. Now the cement needs to set. Now I've got another exciting spring job to do in the garden. Two years ago, I planted a lotus in the pond at the front of the house. And I would like to reproduce it because it's been doing really well and it flowered beautifully so that I can have one in the, in the pond of the vegetable garden. Um, so there's a very short window uh, to do that because it needs to be done when the lotus is, uh, is resting at the end of the, of the winter. And uh, its lotus are very fragile because the, if they break or, uh, or if you make a bad, uh, a bad move, it can rot and, uh, and then the, the cutting doesn't, uh, doesn't recover. So I've seen that on my pot there was one shoot that had escaped, which is going to be easy to, to pick and uh, plant into another pot. And it's actually starting to produce a new shoot, so it's, uh, it's really uh, time to do it. So I'm going to... It doesn't need to be very big, the cutting, because... Uh, because the... It's... Uh, lotus are very vigorous plants. But here, I'm... Uh, I have quite a nice shoot, so I'll be able to... Well, I might as well take it. So I'm going... Um, so I've just done a clean cut here. And I'm going to give it a little uh, clean up of the, the, old, uh, the old leaves. Here it is. So that's actually a really big cutting and it will recover really quickly. So I'm going to put it in its... Uh, it, its new pot with a lot of fertilizer because uh, lotus need uh, a lot of nitrogen. A 
Lotus are very fast growing plants that need a lot of nitrogen. So I'm using slow release uh, fertilizer, special for, uh, for water plants. And uh, I need to be quite uh, generous in the amount I put in. So I'm using this old barrel to start the lotus for this year. It's quite a small, uh, a small pot for a big plant like this. Uh, but it will do before I transplant it. Ideally, I would need something at least uh, one meter in diameter, so much bigger than, uh, than this one. But then it's quite, uh, quite heavy to handle. So there's, uh, the, it's a barrel we used for uh, mi mixing cement. Uh, it's full of uh, rainwater because we've had uh, We've had some, uh, a lot of rain over the last couple of days. Uh, so I'm just leaving it because, uh, so I don't have to fill it up more. And I put a big handful of, of fertilizer at the bottom. And then I'm going to take some topsoil. So it's normal garden soil. Uh, the, they like quite muddy, heavy clay soil. Uh, so I'm just using uh, garden soil and I've been sieving some for um, our uh, greenhouse project. So I have a lot of good topsoil. Then some more fertilizer. And I'm going to lay my cutting flat over it. It's actually a bit too big for her. So I'll try to bend it without breaking it. I'm going to get a stone so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't float up. And also, if you're uh, if you're in a pond where you have fish, it's quite uh, good to put a heavy stone so they can't dig it out. And a tiny bit more soil. So it's all good. Now I'm going to finish submersing it. Uh, I'm I have all the water right by me because we've been doing some masonry and they have a lot of rainwater in the buckets perfect all done and now we just have to leave it in a very sunny spot and once it starts growing again, we'll uh, immerse it into the, the pond. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done.